Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with an auto review and I hope you are doing well. This time it is a e-tracking bike, the Koga Signature E-World Traveler S. It's a really Dutch bike and in this video I will explain to you why you should consider this bike if you're planning to buy a new e-tracking bike. Welcome to the review of the Koga Signature E-World Traveler S. And if this is the first time that you tune into my YouTube channel, it might be important to know that I'm a 100% independent reviewer journalist. I'm not being paid by manufacturers to make my reviews. So if you value independent reviewing, please subscribe to my channel. You know where to hit the button below. Um, now let's head over to Koga. Koga is a really Dutch bike brand. Um, it was founded in the early 70s and it is situated in Heerenveen, which is basically up north in our country. Um, the World Traveler is a basically a traveling bike icon. Um, it's been there since I've been into bikes. The World Traveler was always this benchmark. That there was going to be a time that they would make a E version of the World Traveler. Well, that's not more than logical. I'm referring in this video to Koga because I'm not going to say the, the full name Signature E-World Traveler S the whole time. It's just simply too long. But there's one thing that is important to know that the Signature and also the S, um, it's let's say a build system and a website from the Koga company. Normally, bike manufacturers, they build a bike which is ready and you buy it in the shop or online. The Koga Signature program works in a way that you can assemble the bike to your own liking. So you can change the wheels, you can change the tires, the steer, or the handlebar, the saddle, everything you can change. Um, that's of course not been done by this bike because this is a test bike and they're not only building it for me but also for other ones. Um, so they gave me a bike with a frame size 57 centimeters which is perfect for my length of one meter, almost 70 centimeters. Um, and it is really fully loaded with all the bits and bobs you would like to have on a trekking bike. And now let's have a look into all the small details and let's start with the engine. Koga uses the Bosch Performance Line CX motor. And as you can see, it's a mid engine. So it's placed in the heart of the frame of the bike. Um, and as you can see also that the crank is a integral part of the motor itself. The motor is of course probably the most heavy part of the bike. And by placing it in this position, you get a really nice low center of gravity. And that is really good for the handling of a bike. And that's a bit different with bikes who have a front mounted engine in the front wheel or a rear mounted engine in the rear wheel. They always have got a bit of, I don't want to say instable, but a quite particular way of handling. The Koga with the Bosch is really neutral. One of the things I really like about this engine is the fact that when you put power from your legs onto the pedals and the bike is in support modus, you hardly feel the engine react to the force you are giving. Some engines, they've got this on off, on off going on inside the engine itself. This one really works very subtle. Now let's move upwards and have a look at the display and all the switches that you use to change from the different modes. The display is mounted in the center of the handlebar which is a perfect position because it's always straight into your vision in your line of sight. Um, there is a little button here and that will detach the display so when you park your bike somewhere always take your display so it won't get stolen. Um, to power the bike you just press the on off button and there you see it the bike is on now. Uh, and now I'll have to move to the other side to show you all the different um, modes that there are. As you can see on the left side of the handlebar, I've got three buttons. A plus, the information button and the minus. And there's an extra one here as well, that if you want to walk with the bike, then you press this button and the bike helps you while walking. Pressing the information button, now you can see that on this part, I am in gear number six. Pressing the information button gets the trip distance, the clock, the maximum speed, pretty impressive, average speed, 
quite okay. The trip time and the range. And of course, there is no predicted range at the moment because the system is off. When I press the plus button, you see I get into eco support modus. And with eco support, I have got 232 kilometers of distance to go with my battery. Tour, it's about the half or exactly the half and so on. And of course, it's most energy consumptive in the turbo mode. So you should use that one only in case of, well, big fun. Let's go back to the eco mode um, and by the information button into the gear. I told you that is in, in sixth gear now. And the funny thing is the system, the roll of hub in the rear wheel where all the gear or where the 14 gears are in, it's automatic. Well, sort of automatic. It's electrically operated. It's an electric shifting mechanism. Um, when you stop, the bike shifts automatically back to gear number six. Because when you start biking again, um, it's easy to be in sixth gear instead of maybe 12, because then you will have to put a lot of force in the system to get going. Now, the funny thing is, or the good thing is, that you can choose a lot of things yourself. Just press the reset and the information button in the same time, and you get into the configuration screen. And then you can change the clock, the wheel circumference, if that's the correct word. The language, I put it in English, could be Dutch as well. Units, but this one is the important one. This is the start gear. If you're into a mountainous area, you probably don't want the sixth gear. You would probably want gear number four or maybe even three. And if you're very powerful, then you might even want to go into eight or higher. So this is how you change it. And I still like to put it in six. So push the reset button again. And this is how I save my information. If you are familiar with the roll of speed up, then you will notice immediately that the shifter is not like the ones that you normally would see, like the twist shifters. This one is totally electric and it's got two buttons. This is downshifting and that is of course upshifting. And you can do it by one push or you can do it by one, two, three, or you can do it by pressing a bit longer and then you will hear that it goes three gears up in one go. But this is not the interesting part. The interesting part is basically at the rear end of the bike. So let's move over to the rear. The role of speed hub is this black thing in the rear wheel. Um, in this hub, there are 14 gears and it's really a miracle how this has been designed. Uh, I've been using roll of speed hubs already for many, many years and it is really proven quality. They are bulletproof and almost maintenance free. And now I'm talking about maintenance free. That's one of the other things that's good on this bike. And that is the Gates belt drive. Um, a belt and not a chain. Um, and one of the big benefits of a belt, in my opinion, is that a belt is really silent. It produces hardly any noise whatsoever. So I can listen while biking to the wind, but mostly to the birds. Um, this is a Gates center track belt uh, with two sprockets, also center track sprockets. And now that I've set Gates center track, um, I should explain this. The sprocket is raised in the middle and this raised part fits into the well, little opening in the teeth in the Gates belt. And this prevents the Gates belt from slipping sideways if the wheel is a bit off center. So Gates center track. And different to a chain, when you put a lot of force on your pedals, it is possible that the belt lifts from the sprocket and it tips over basically. If this happens, that's not nice. It's not good for the belt. It's also not good for your biking experience. And therefore they invented the snubber. Um, the snubber is basically a wheel that is positioned above um, the belt. So when the belt gets released, the snubber, the wheel, prevents it from getting really loose from the sprocket itself. But I started this conversation about the electrified 
roll off gear changing mechanism but then we have to change to the other side and this is the little black box that i was talking about this is the e40 electronic shifter um, and as with every roll of shifter this one is also detachable so if you've got a leak tire or your tire um, has been worn out you just take the wheel out and you can take this part away so changing tires should not be a problem I'm almost forgetting to tell you one thing about belts and that is that a belt is of course one closed loop it's endless and that's different to a chain because a chain has got shackles and you can take the shackles apart and that is easy because if you want to replace your chain you just take the shackles apart loosen the chain from the bike put a new one on and put the shackles back with a belt that's just not possible and therefore they made this opening at Koga in the frame there's of course a aluminium wedge in there it's bolted in but when you take this one out you've got the opening where the belt fits into and you can mount a new belt again to the bike to put tension on the belt something that's also very important to prevent it from lifting um, on the sprockets you've got these tensioners on the rear and of course there is a hex bolt so you can adjust it quite easily the fork and the frame are made out of aluminium and as you can see it is a very interesting shape it's not just round tubing welded together and, and that's because these tubes are made by hydroforming and hydroforming means putting a lot of pressure inside a aluminium tube and forcing it into the shape of the mold after this is done you get this quite in my opinion very interesting frame to look at it's just beautiful the welds but you don't actually see welds and that's something that Koga is very proud of because this is a process that they call smooth welding yes all the tubes are welded together but then a layer of putty is put over the weld and that's been smoothened out so you don't actually see the welds and this seems to be the trend in the bike industry at the moment to my personal liking I'd rather see a beautifully made weld with all those small ribbles in it because that shows the craftsmanship of the welder itself but the frame is really beautiful and you can see that also the wiring they are all into the frame which makes it less vulnerable and they go to the direction where they need to go so all in all I do think this is a very beautiful made frame Koga uses carriers from the German brand Tubus and in the front you find a Tubus Duo uh, which is a low rider um, it's very good to put panniers on and I really like it because the low center of gravity that is also in the middle of um, the wheel the front fork is made out of aluminium and it's got three attachment points to put cargo to basically or if you would like to use more bottle bottle holders on the bike you can put them here as well in the rear there is a Tubus logo carrier and I like logo carriers because of the wide area that protects you basically your bag from the wheel um, and also that you can mount it on this low bar but also on the high bar I always take the lower ones because that means the center of gravity is lower um, and when you load your bags really high then this surface is really good to put a tent a sleeping mattress and what I always take with me is a chair the energy the Bosch engine uses comes from the Bosch Powerpack 500 and the biggest question with e-bikes is of course how much distance can I travel with a battery well that's of course depending on the support mode that you are using most of the time uh, when I test e-bikes I always use mainly eco and tour because I like the e-bike or the motor to be a support and not like a main uh, force behind what I'm doing but sometimes sport is very convenient and turbo is very funny and useful when you're on climbing hills or like here in the flat Netherlands where you got the wind full blown into your face um, with my body weight of 63 kilograms the bike weighing 24.8 and all my test luggage my total weight on the battery basically is about 120 kilograms and in eco and tour mainly I got a uh, range of about a hundred kilometers and I think that is fine for a e-bike like this because well 100 kilometers is something that I like to travel on a normal trekking day when you visit a castle you go and have a good lunch somewhere um, so 100 kilometers is fine well then 
If you are stopping for lunch and your battery is, let's say, charged, uh, decharged for about 50%, then it takes about an hour and a bit more to charge it again to the full max. If the battery is totally empty, then it takes about three hours to get it full again. And charging, of course, you do this with an adapter that's provided with the bike and a wall socket in the hotel, your B&B, on the campsite or just at home. The Koga is equipped with a hydraulic disc brake system from Shimano, the Dior XT series. Um, the discs in the front and in the rear wheel are 160 mm in diameter. The calipers on the front and the rear both are operated by two pistons. On the handlebar, the brake levers are adjustable, so you can make them um, fit to small and larger hands just by turning a little knob. The braking force is really well balanced and you never got the idea that you will block one of the wheels. And even with a fully loaded bike, well, stopping is pretty fast. The behavior of the Koga is very predictable and I do like the fact that this is a bike with a 27.5 wheel set. For me, as a small guy, this is the perfect balance between a compact bike setup, riding characteristics and comfort. The tires are from Schwalbe, the Supermoto X 27.5 and they are 62 millimeters wide. So this is a really big balloon tire and if you're traveling on tarmac you inflate them quite hard and you've got almost no rolling resistance but still great comfort. And if you're traveling on more like gravel roads or dirt tracks just release a bit of that air and you get a really comfortable ride. There's one thing I would like you to know that how I test trekking bikes and that is always with the same cargo basically in the panniers and that is not with a regular camping equipment because every time when you pack your camping equipment um, it's a different weight. So already about 15 years ago I started with these guys, just dumbbells and I put them in the bags, it, they are wrapped into cardboard so they don't damage the bags and they are basically attached to the back of the pannier, so close to the bike. And they're always in the same spot. In the front, I use 10 kilos in total and in the rear, 15 kilos in total. And in this way, I can always relate to the handling of bikes I tested in the past. And that's how I know if this bike handles well or not. Um, the Koga, well, it's very stiffly built. And because of the tubus carriers, it is also a very stiff carrying system. And together with my Org Leaps or the Vaudes I test with Vaudes as well, um, this is really a bike that is capable of carrying at least 25 kilograms. What you should be aware of is the fact that the bike has a weight limit of 130 kilograms. So that's the bike, that's me, and that's the cargo. So if you are a bit more heavier than I am, and I'm 63 kilograms, then you should really count from 130 kilograms back to your weight and how much cargo you can carry. I've been talking to Koga about this and I told them that I'm pretty convinced that this bike is capable of carrying way more than 130 kilograms in total. And yes, they do agree, but according to law and their testing facilities, they're working on a test which goes way above, above the 130. But according to the law at the moment, it's just legally 130 kilograms. So be aware of this. As I told you before, the Koga is fully loaded. And in this case, there is even a lock on it. And that's something I do like because most bikes are advertised with a very low weight because there is no lock on it. Um, and I think on a trekking bike, well, basically you need a lock. It's inconvenient if you don't have it and they are expensive bikes, so put a lock on it. This one is not in the signature program yet because the adapter that is in here um, has not been officially released. So be aware if you order a bike from Koga that this is not in the signature program yet, but it will be pretty shortly. Koga put a Brooks C17 cambium saddle onto the E-World Traveler and that is really to my liking because people who are following me already for some time they know that I am a great lover of the C17 cambium. Due to the position of the battery on the down tube you don't have the possibility to put a large bottle holder here. But 
underneath here, underneath the down tube, there's a connection point, and also on this one. So, place enough for water. There is not much on the Koga that I absolutely don't like, except for the grips from Brooks. The surface is way too slippery to my liking. Uh, one thing that is actually missing is a bell, because a bell, well, they're obliged to, in Dutch law, to have a bell on a bike. And one thing that is totally unacceptable, that is the very sloppy electricity taping to attach the electrical wire to the handlebar. Now on to my verdict. How do I rate the Koga Signature E World Traveler S? Well, I think it's a pretty awesome bike. Um, the geometry is really well balanced, so you can really do long distance traveling in great comfort. The weight of the bike, 24.8 kilos as I measured, I don't think that's too much for a bike that is fully loaded with all the small details that it has. The range of the battery as I measured it, 100 case, is fine too, because with everything on it, it's about 120 kilos that it has to propel forward. Um, and I think for a normal trekking day, 100 case is pretty fine. There are a few things that I don't like. The first is the sloppy taping on the handlebar. For a bike of this quality, that should be better. Um, the Brook grips, that's a personal thing. I would probably change them in some other ones, probably the ones from Aragon. Uh, and the fact that the bike is not equipped with a bell, which is legally um, bounded in the Netherlands. You should have a bell on a bike. Well, that's something I, I don't like, of course, but I talked to Koga about this and yes, they made a mistake. So they will give a bell on every bike that they send out. Um, you should be aware of the weight limitations because the bike is capable or allowed to carry a total weight of 130 kilos. So if you are a, quite a heavy person, then you really should think about how much cargo you can take with you on your travels. Um, but that said, I'm pretty sure that the bike is capable of handling much more cargo than the 130 kilogram in total. Then the price, it is 6,025 euros, which is a lot of money for a e-bike. But still, in this top category of e-tracking bikes, this is quite normal money. And therefore I rate the Koga Signature E-World Traveler S at 9.2 points out of 10 total. I hope you liked the review and that it is useful to you. And if it is, please give it a like and leave a comment below. I'm doing these reviews totally for free. I'm not being paid by manufacturers to make them. I don't have any affiliate deals and I don't have advertisements on my website. So if you value my independent way of reviewing, please support me by subscribing to my YouTube channel, following me on Instagram and liking my Facebook page. Many, many thanks in advance if you do. Enjoy the outdoors. Ciao, ciao.